is Leslie and I manage the live animal program here at the Natural History Museum. So who is the Live Animal Programs team, also known as Living Collections? Uh, we actually have two um, facets of the collection, uh, but there are seven of us total. Some of the team works primarily with invertebrates and some of the team works primarily with vertebrates. We have around 15 to 20 different vertebrate species that live here at the museum. And this can include the ovarian chub out at the pond, or in the nature lab, it might be one of the 13 rats, or our Southern Pacific rattlesnake, California newts. Uh, behind the scenes, it might include Odin, our western screech owl, or one of our many opossums that come through our door. We have some small snakes and tortoises uh, and other amphibians whose entire job, whose entire purpose is to make those personal connections at daily animal presentations, school visits, festivals, donors, any number of interactions can be created with this collection. We have about 70 to 100 invertebrates at any given time in various places around the museum. Of course, the Butterfly and Spider Pavilion in our new Bugtopia on the second floor. I can't wait for you to see that. The Nature Lab, of course, and behind the scenes in our USDA quarantine facility called the Insectary. You're gonna to get to hear more about the invertebrates from one of my colleagues coming up pretty soon, I hope. So now that you know a little bit about the collection and a little bit about us, I'll just tell you what we're up to right now because we are still here taking care of the animals. You know, uh, people don't realize that animal care professionals are considered you know, crucial staff. They, at every zoo and every animal facility across the nation, animal care staff are still going into work 365 days a year, somebody's still got to take care of those animals. So as long as it's safe for humans, uh, animal keepers are still coming in and doing their job. So of course our team is taking a lot of precautions. We wear masks when we're in proximity to each other and keep appropriate social distancing. We've even split up our team a little bit to avoid running into each other too much. So we're looking after humans first, but then making sure that the animals get everything that they need in this time. So the quality of care has not changed at all. Another thing that's a little bit tricky to do right now is some of our veterinary care, but no worries. Uh, we still have very detailed oversight of everything that the animals need. We can actually do a little bit of telemedicine. What you see here is software where we can track each animal's tiny little life in so much detail. So while nothing beats hands-on veterinary attention, we can do quite a lot uh, using some telemedicine and she can still come here if she needs to, absolutely. A lot of people don't even realize that we do veterinary care in a program like this. I'm actually gonna take you over to our veterinary care area just to show you a little bit of what goes on over there. So this is our uh, animal care sort of veterinary corner, as it were. I wanna to mention too that our veterinarian, Dr. Leah Greer, is really spectacular veterinarian. Dr. Greer is a board certified specialist in zoological medicine. There's only about 200 or 300 of them in our whole nation. So we're actually really lucky to have her. But meanwhile, we can do so much. Um, we have lots of ways to take uh, samples. We can do blood samples. We can do stool samples. We can do uh, skin samples. And we can look at them under the scopes. We can send them off to a lab. We have all sorts of um, testing and medicating equipment, including quite a range of medications that, per our doctor's instructions, we can deliver. We actually do have a registered veterinary technician on staff at the time, lucky us. So, you know, while it's a small veterinary corner, it's mighty and it helps us provide the absolute best care possible for these animals who deserve it as being part of our collection. Another aspect of veterinary care is our quarantine room. Now, every animal that comes into the collection has to remain in the quarantine room for a period of 30 to 90 days, depending on the species or depending on any problems that might come up, so that we can monitor the animal for any kind of health problems, viruses, 
parasites uh, or behavioral or other health problems to make sure that they are absolutely healthy enough to come in and be introduced to the rest of the collection and not cause any problems for anyone else. I'm actually going to bring you in that room to meet one of our brand new animals who is just about to get released from quarantine today. Now I do want to mention that this habitat might look a little bit boring, a little bit simple. There's a reason for that. In quarantine, you want to make sure things are really cleanable, really hard to hide any messes or um, any samples that the animal might leave behind. So the habitats in quarantine, we do try to enrich them and keep their lives interesting, but sometimes in quarantine they have to be a little bit more simple. He's going to really enjoy his new home in the collection though. All right, so I'm going to get him out here. He's exploring some of the items we've got in there. Now he's still getting used to meeting people. It takes a little bit of time. All right. This is the new guy. Isn't he a looker? Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous animal. He's a California king snake, and we called him Burt Reynolds for that sassy little mustache he's got on the front of his nose. <laughs> he's a really cool snake. And you can imagine, if I get to present an animal like this for guests, they will not be able to take their eyes off of him. I'm really excited to have him in the collection. He's still learning to relax when he's near humans. You know, this is a training process. We have to teach him that we're not gonna hurt him. And while he's not scared, he's just curious right now, over time, he'll get more and more comfortable and realize that there's no danger from us humans whatsoever. There are some benefits to being closed. We can give our animals new enriching experiences that we might not be able to do otherwise. So we've been able to take Odin, our owl, out for all kinds of different walkabouts to expose him to different places. We took him to the dino hall. We take him out to the gardens to listen to the sounds. You know, he does have an outdoor space out there, but it's really cool for him to be able to walk around on our glove all throughout the gardens. Uh, the tortoises as well get to explore new places. They walk up and down the paths with our guidance. They even help out the gardeners just a little bit with a little bit of the weed control. Here's Vanilla the tortoise having the absolute time of her life in this forest of weeds. And this is our cabinet of fun. This is just one example of the kinds of things that we provide for all the animals. We have toys, we have puzzles, we have scents, we have textures. You know, and every animal actually gets enriched in some way or another based on the species needs. But you might be surprised, snakes like to explore and play too. You can hang something like this for an opossum to dig in, but you can also hang it for a snake to climb in. Now, one of the benefits that we found recently is that we get a little bit more face time with our group of rats. So their training has come along really quite far since we've been closed because we get just a lot more quiet time to work with them. We train them twice a day. That is part of their enrichment too. It's good for their minds to be stimulated and to learn new things. I've been here for 21 years, since 1999. I've seen a lot of changes happen in this museum. One thing that has remained pretty consistent, for me at least, is the extreme power that this program wields to create human-animal connections, personal, intimate, and sometimes emotional connections to the science that goes on here at this museum and to the wildlife that they might see in their yards, neighborhoods, county parks. Uh, school children retain information better after having met a live animal. Um, they have positive emotional responses after meeting a live animal. They actually show more positive environmental behaviors after meeting a live animal. We've even begun to offer some remote live animal presentations. 
Here is a picture of one that we tried with a school in Compton recently. I think they had a really great time. I know I did. There's always someone at our presentations. Um, no matter how many people are visiting the museum that day, we always have people who want to meet our live animals. You know, not to mention the number of people that I've personally talked to who came in with lifelong phobias. And after just a few minutes of chatting together, quietly and carefully talking about this animal nearby that they have always been afraid of, often it's snakes, sometimes arachnids. Some of them change their minds completely. They might end up touching the snake or cooing over it and calling it beautiful. You know, and after an experience like that, it's kind of hard to not feel like you're changing the world in some small way. We are making the science that happens here come alive and make it personal for people. It's pretty cool. Here we are at the brand new habitat set up for our California king snake. You are getting the first view of him going into his new habitat. Hope you enjoy it, buddy. Now, as you can see, we try to provide a lot of enrichment, even for our snakes. There are so many places to hide in here, places to climb naturalistic materials like moss and rock and wood so that they can really feel like they have some variety in their life and also so it can feel like home. Now he's actually going in just a little bit cautiously here because it's a new space. You know, snakes love to explore new habitats. We might even take some time to enrich it with some new smells. We'll take some herbs from the garden and put them in there for him to smell. Oh, he's peeking his head back out. Okay, that's too cute. Hey bud, what do you think? I think he's gonna have a great time. So I hope this gives you a little window into our new normal, at least for now. And you can rest assured that these animals are being very well cared for, even while the museum is closed. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Your generosity is what makes it possible for us to provide enriching, healthy environments for our beloved live animals. <laughs> Scene stealer. <laughs>